It's time, amigos. Let's get some fabbing going. Today we're going to start with uh, the top hoop. I already pre-bent this uh, from I think at the end of the last video and uh, I just had to tack it so I took one piece and I bent it basically into a rectangle um, and we're welding the, the machine set at about 124 amps but since I am TIG brazing I'm barely getting up to 30 amps I'm getting I'm staying really cool because I'm also kind of I'm doing a butt joint on it so I don't really want too much heat I want the the silicon bronze to you know bleed throughout the top and bottom and it was a pretty good joint so I was happy with that um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get the side rails dialed in a little bit better and since I bent them together they're a mirrored image but this truck has a, a pinch in the front end so I got to figure out a way to get the the dimension to kind of pinch. I always bend my pieces long and trim to the size that I need it. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm measuring the part where I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to do my main hoop off the back of that. And then I'm marking where I'm going to cut it for where it goes all the way to the front. Now if you cut these together, they're tack welded at the end here as you can see, that means it's going to be theoretically square or you know you're at least starting in the kind of in the right wheelhouse and uh, of course you gotta enjoy the buttery smooth sparks here gotta love those sparks um, so if you go and you pick up one of these aprons I would suggest doing light welding and light spark throwing at these aprons they're kind of a weird nylon material uh, they're awesome I really like them they're lightweight they're great for the summer but I think if you want to do heavy duty fabricating and welding, I would definitely stick with a leather one. So this is our little bender. I don't really know what it's called. You can get it on Amazon. If you go to scalemetalsupplies.com, it shows all the tools that we use when we fabricate. And incidentally, just so you know, these videos, these fab videos, they're brought to you primarily by scalemetalsupplies.com. Uh, Andre there's the owner. He's a great guy really cool really helpful in the fabrication world of rc um, go check out their website buy some stuff there's a link in the description here on how you can get there it's not an affiliate link really for me but if you listen to the podcast you can get a discount code for your orders sometimes you need to just bend these by hand and kind of get them as close as you can to what that dimension is and uh you know, if you don't have strong enough hands, sometimes you can put it, drill a hole in your table and bend it that way. But I think I was able to get it to taper just enough on the front here. Um, next time I take, next time I do this, I'm gonna do an overhead rig. Normally I have one. I set up my table on a different table now for my main fabrication. So you'll be seeing not only tight shots, but overhead rig shots on, you know, what we're looking at. So this is the secondary line. This line goes on the body. I always do one kind of like on the crest of the body line um, because that's typically this, you know, where the body hits when it rolls on its side. And I'm trying to fit this up now to kind of see where I can trim it and uh, what'll look good, just seeing if we're close. So when I start welding, I actually start with the one of the hoops of the cages. And so here I pre-bent the, you know, I guess you could call it a C. I pre-bent that to the right width. And now what I'm doing is I'm marking how high I want that C to be. Um, I wanted it to come down basically to the bottom of the rear window. So I marked it and I actually measured it off, off camera um, to make sure that they were even. And so I just measured that down. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a twist to that, but you can fix that by just kind of bending it back, laying it on the table and seeing if it lays flat. Once it lays flat, you're good to go. So now it's time to start welding. Uh, I'm not gonna be TIG welding this uh, for them yet, actually, I should say. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be tacking it with a MIG welder. I'm using 023 wire uh, and the MIG mix 
before I had forgot what the CO2 argon number is. It's like 2575 or whatever. Um, but right now I'm just dialing it in. I'm using the DOM tubing uh, for this particular build because I want to kind of try to keep the weight down. So on the other side, you can't see, but I have the bottom rail of that follows the fender locked in place. And now I'm just tacking the main hoop to that. And a little trick, if you just tack like the edge or the corner, it's still, the metal's still soft enough where you can bring it up to where you need it to be. Um, meaning you can bend the weld and the tubing to get to the position that you need to. So in this one, I'm, I'm kind of bending it up to see where I'm at, but obviously you can see that that rail isn't in the spot where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna flip the truck around and uh, kind of jig things up, clamp things down and get them in the right spot. Uh, this is where it's gonna be really helpful when I do an overhead shot so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, keep in mind too, everything you weld stays hot for a while. So uh, if you're taking off your gloves, pat down the piece that you're gonna be working on because it's gonna, that'll tell you if it's too hot to touch or not. So I'm moving this right into the spot that I want it to get, and then I'm gonna bring the hoop over to that. And then we're gonna tack it all together. Now, I know people are gonna cringe when they see me welding on the truck. Um, I think it adds to my aesthetic. Um, it's really not me just being lazy. I like the way it looks where the burn joints are on the truck. Not all my trucks are like that. And generally, I cover the wheels and tires of the, if it's near the joint that I'm tacking. Um, TIG welding is not too bad because TIG welding, at least, you know, it's, there's no slag, um, no sparks. And so I feel comfortable TIG welding anywhere on the truck and not worried about, you know, anything getting into it. I do have some electronics kind of on this um, truck. I have the two, or maybe one servo on here. Um, it's an RTR servo. It's basically there just to kind of be a placeholder. Um, I'll use it to kind of dial in the truck and then eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something a little bit more beefy on it. So I just tacked it down. Everything's looking pretty close to where I want it and now I'm going to start doing that second. So you can see how it's got a little bit of a dog leg to it. Now I'm going to mark down where I can trim off the, the nose and trim off the back part. And uh, it's real important to get down on it and to see real close to where your parts are. If you're trying to do it from a distance away or over the top only, it's going to be really hard to make everything line up. Um, so I would definitely do that. I wouldn't recommend, unless you're really comfortable with a grinder, to deburr um, with the cutoff wheel. It can catch and it can make things uh, a little nasty. So here's some. Uh, here's I'm, I'm still trying to line these things up, trying to get things. Sometimes it's hard when you're welding on the car to get things to stay in place, but uh, you kind of have to fight it every now and then, and just hope and pray that everything's going to be lined up when you tack it down. And you can see the back isn't perfectly 90, but I can fix that uh, before I weld in the front joint there. So, um, I'll, and I'll definitely do that when I weld in the other side. So we're gonna do that little trick that I was telling you about. So now that that joint that I'm gonna be welding is close to the tires, I like to keep the tires and the wheels free of slag. So what I use is you can use a piece of leather that you have laying around if you have a piece laying around. Um, if you have an old apron, you can cut that up and stick it over. I just stuck, did a old glove every now and then you lose a finger on one glove and so you have another glove kind of just sitting around. I cut that open and it makes it a little easier for me to wrap whatever I'm welding on just to kind of keep everything safe and out of the way. Also when you're MIG welding, if you're dialed in, you shouldn't have a ton of huge sparks jumping off and big balls of, of slag. It should be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty tight little sh sharp spark there. So 
always, always, always wear your, your visor or your shield when you're doing cutting and grinding. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten stuff in my eye, even while wearing glasses and the, uh, the shield, but you know, safety first. I'm always, I'm a huge fan of, uh, all my fingers and being able to see and, uh, you know, just be safe. Think about things, respect them. You don't have to be scared of them. You want to have the confidence, but you want to respect the part that you're working with and the tool that you're working with. You know, never, you got to be deliberate all the time when you're using the grinder. Uh, if you kind of lightly are, are holding something, it's going to kick on you and it's going to either bite you or just be a bad day. And that happens to all of us. Um, you know, also be very careful when you're cutting and grinding with these thin, I use the thin 035, I think they're 035 grinder wheels. Um, I can get really in tight with that. I also use a die grinder, like a 90 degree grinder uh, with a pad on it. I really like those too. I can get into a lot of places like that or, you know, shorten or, or like miter the edges. Um, that tool is super valuable in my arsenal. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just bending that arc, that kind of arc to get it closer to the to the body so that it's nice and tight on the body. Um, should just slide right in there. And it does. Love it. Everything's looking good. Looking pretty even. Now watch this. Actually, don't watch this yet. I'm not there. I thought I was there already. I'm still doing the same thing where I'm trimming everything down. Just getting it to the right spot. Um, you know, like I said before, always, always cut your pieces long and then trim them down to size, especially when you're making custom cages like this. It is very difficult to get everything perfectly square. And to be honest, I don't pay much attention to it. I probably have a little bit more experience than most people in fabricating, so I get it pretty close and close enough that it looks good. But when it comes to these little RC cars, you know, it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, uh, it doesn't, there's no bodies inside. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about it. Oh, here we go. Here's where I, I almost, I almost did the cardinal sin. I was wearing my visor and my, my welding hood is a auto darkening one. So that one is a, uh, you know, I'm seeing pretty clear through my welding hood and I'm just about to tack this piece on wearing my visor. And I go to flip it down, and I'm like, hey, it didn't go dark. So luckily I caught it before I welded it on. <laughs> so didn't want to blind myself for the afternoon. So got that part all squared away. Things are looking good. The chassis is starting to come along. I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, this little sesh of uh, fab time. And uh, if you guys have questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them on the fab stuff. We've got another fab session coming. Um, I skipped ahead a little bit and got some more stuff built on the truck. And, uh, you know, there's a few more tips and tricks I can share with you on that one. We got more coming up. I hope you stay tuned for it. Thank you.